this is a very unusual telescope because it's actually two telescopes. There is the 24 inch, 60 centimeter uh, mirror telescope reflector, which bounces the light to a second mirror and then down into this eyepiece, so you can see things with the eyepiece. But next to it is a photographic camera, and you can see here that it takes photographic plates. You put a plate in there, you close it up, and then you can expose it for however long you want to take your picture. And of course, you can expose it for an hour, two hours, five minutes, whatever is appropriate. Now, we've got the telescope pointing this way. We have to move the dome around. I always push these buttons the wrong way. Let's see if I can get it right this time. The trouble is that wire with the handle is getting caught on, um, yeah. Can you, uh, can you turn it uh, uh, Sorry, one more time? Again. Yeah. Okay, and if you can make sure it doesn't get caught on that wheel. So we're going to turn the dome to, to match where one, the telescope one, one is pointing. Second. Can you say that again? So we're going to turn the dome to match where the telescope is pointing. You can get yourself really dizzy if you look at the dome too much. still setting, but we could set up ahead of time and have the telescope pointing in the direction we want to go, and then as it gets darker, the telescope will already be aimed at whatever object we're observing tonight. You can see we can get a marvelous view with an eyepiece, or even not later with an electronic camera here, we can get a wonderful view, we can get a wonderful view of the, uh, you know, in the photographic plate, but there's something special that this telescope could do. Remember the difference between measuring where the stars are and measuring what the stars are. With a photographic plate, you can then measure where the stars are. You know where the bright ones are, and you can measure the faint ones in comparison. But we have down in the closet there, locked away in a box I can't get at, a prism that turns all of the stars into little spectra. Now, it's not a little prism that fits in the eyepiece. It's a prism as big as the telescope. And if you look up above us, you see that chain hanging up there? That was the winch that would be used to haul this, you know, 500 pound prism, this 500 pound piece of glass to fit over the end of the telescope. And then when you took a photograph, every star suddenly becomes a little streak and you can see where the dark lines are and the bright lines are and identify the type of the star, every star in the photograph all at once. That's how astronomy was done in the 1930s and the 1940s. That's how it was done when this was the state of the art of telescopes. Made in Jena, in Germany, before the war. Uh, a phenomenal optics of the sort that you wouldn't find today. But of course today you have now computer control to make the mirrors, to make the optics, so that we can match or you know, do better than what they did then for the equipment they had, then this was the best in the world. Okay. Yeah, and back, oh. back again.
Curious George books. Oh, the yes. Last and it's the same guy who wrote the perfect Teach Constellations to a Kid book. Okay. And just look up, you know, find the constellations and then oh, wow. the author. Okay. Like that. Okay, that's beautiful. Are you filming? Yeah. You want to link the text? No, no. Yeah. You can see okay. the... Uh, you can see it moving. Eh? If you just leave it like that, Yeah. it moves. It moves on its own. That's perfect. You see it... Uh, beautiful. You see the... The waas van the atmosfeer zie je doorheen. Yeah, yeah. heel mooi. Je kan proberen zonder, zonder uh, oculair, maar zonder oculair lukt niet. Nee, ik bedoel zonder dat die uh, dat je het rondje zit te bedoelen. Closer nog. Uh, ja, dat is wel heel mooi. Ja, je krijgt vol krijg je niet, want een, 